All right, this is the inaugural episode of Business Practices. I'm here with David from Knockout Business, and we are talking about the recession today and what small businesses can do to prepare, react, what's going to happen, what are our thoughts on the future. And so let's get started off with just your quick take on the current environment and what even is this you know, we we all we we've heard many many times. Twenty twenty three recession. Twenty twenty three twenty three recession. Technically, we're in a recession, but like, what is this state that we're currently in? What are you feeling? Okay, I agree. I I believe we've been in a recession since twenty twenty two, right? But they say twenty twenty three the the recession's coming, and if we're not in one, it's definitely coming. But Let's backtrack a little to where the, when this all started back in 2020 to the to the pandemic. So what happened in 2020 when the whole country, no, the whole world literally shut down, right? We had to shut down our business for for three months. And that was scary because in my business, it took so many years to build up a steady clientele. And when they forced us to close, I lost everything. So, so what helped me when after the three months that we were closed is I kept my, my employees on payroll because I didn't want to lose them. Something that was going on during that time, so many people were getting on unemployment because unemployment, not only were they giving you your check, they were adding an extra $600 a week. So that's basically why everyone here in the U.S. didn't want to go to work. They made more to stay home. But I kept my employees, kept them on payroll, coming out of pocket. We did get certain grants that helped out, then some business loans too. But during this time, many businesses could not reopen. They lost everything. They lost the building. They lost their employees. So when we opened back up within a few months, we were doing better than before because my competition, it, they went out of business. So everyone thought that was the end of it, right? Things are getting better. Everyone has money to spend, but now we're starting to see inflation and it's starting to, it's starting to hit all of us, right? And you notice it when you go to the grocery store, when you go out, you know, for entertainment. Me, we're a family of four. When we go out to eat, I remember spending an average of about $50, $60. And now it's getting close to about $100 every time we we go out and eat the grocery store. You remember with $100, $150, you could almost fill up a cart. Now, what does $100 do? It gives you two bags of groceries. So, I believe that this recession, it's it's it it's gonna be harder than the pandemic in in 2020. The way I'm preparing for that is I'm looking to expand my business and well, not just the business, but open up new businesses, invest money in in assets that go up with inflation. And what you could do is you could just read back, right? Look, Look at the Great Depression, what happened 100 years ago? How long did it take to come back from that? What assets went up? What went down? Where did, where did rich people invest their money? So I think these are all things you could go back and, and look on. I believe you're going to be in trouble if you're the type of person that just wants a job, work an eight to five, because I do believe many places are going to close in the future. There's going to be way less jobs. We're already seeing it. We're seeing it with some of the biggest companies. They're they're laying off thousands of people. And to for me to prepare is just um, educate yourself, read books, do what rich people do, basically. And you could always go back in history. You go online, could look at YouTube videos and, and just look at what worked back then. History repeats itself. Well, there's a lot to there's a lot to what you just said, and you you hinted at we didn't hint at, but you talked about different factors that are coming into play. We're not this is not just um, 
by the way, I think this is a, the recession is the nice way of putting depression. I think this yeah. will be extremely bad and it will, we will have um, certain, certain aspects of this that hark back to the great depression, but every, the, the, while there are similarities, there are definite differences. And this time around, we have a confluence of so many different dynamics. Uh, we've got artificial intelligence re, uh, replacing people. Um, we have got inflation. We have got um, interest rates going up, trying to combat inflation. Um, we have got people being laid off. And, and there's, we've got cryptocurrency when you talk about different assets. But let's just let's just go into a mindset. Hey, we're a small business. Here's what we're going to do pre to prepare for our business. I think if you're a sole proprietor, you're an entrepreneur, or you're just a small business owner with, let's say, 10 or less employees. Um, one thing I'm doing personally is I'm expanding my portfolio of offerings, right? So I've, you've got maybe products, you've got services, you've got different products and different services. And I am... I am veering towards digital. I'm making more courses and I want to have more, I want to have that scalability in there, but it's not just scalability I'm focused on. I don't mind doing service work as long as the, the, the pay is there, but I also want exposure to it. So just in case nothing else is there, hopefully people are hiring me for other things. And like, I don't have to offer them all right now but I want them to be in place to offer when I do. So one of the things that I'm doing to prepare is I'm setting up these, let's call them micro businesses so that they're ready to unveil when I have them, right? Like I have a YouTube channel set to where, okay, now that's in place. Now I can offer this and having those different ones. And then also trying to make them more practical. I'm trying to think of things that are, more necessary maybe not it's not like food shelter water but it's getting closer to there than it is let's say a um designer purse right that you just don't yeah. need what are yeah. what are some things that you're doing all right some of the things i'm doing and basically the same thing you're doing creating a course an online course where i teach people how to be successful in my profession, in the business that, that I have, th that's not really out on the market yet. And I just think it's gonna be a great course. It's, it's gonna change a lot of people's lives. Uh, another thing I'm doing is, is I'm now expanding to selling products, retail and wholesale. That goes along with, with the, the same type of business I do. So I'm gonna provide um, equipment for for combat sports gyms. So we're talking about a course to sell online, consulting, if it's worth it, um, keep expanding on what I'm doing, and then equipment. So there's about four or five business ventures that are that I'm starting as, as we speak. And why? Because I start thinking, okay, what if people can't afford to go to a combat sports gym when, when this recession just gets worse, right? Because I'm almost positive that's going to be one of the first things to go, you know, should I buy food or should I pay for to learn self-defense? People are going to buy food, right? Ne necessities. But if that's the case, okay, if you're going to stay home and practice your combat sports there, then you could come buy equipment for me, right? Um, same thing with my course. A lot of people are are going to lose their jobs, right? Businesses are closing down. So now when they want to do something on their own in combat sports, they could pr purchase my program, learn how to learn how to teach class, sell class, um, everything that goes along with 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 the business. And and I believe this is key. Same thing, I'm also doing my, my YouTube channel and it's not something that I was looking forward to. I never pictured myself, oh, I'm gonna have a YouTube channel, be an influencer, but I did get exposed to it. I, I, I like it and I do think this is necessary, right? You could go online and sell your product services to the world or you could just stay at home or put a place down the street and 
just do something from there. I believe that this is the way to go. And I think that one thing I would want everyone to take away from this episode is no matter what, value always has its place. As long as you the value you provide exceeds the price that pay, that someone is willing to pay, um, then you're always going to have, you're always going to be able to make money, right? It doesn't matter what environment, if you have that value there, then you are going to, um, you're going to be able to make money. Now, you, you're you going to make less, right? Like we're all going to take, I think, I think 60% is a good marker, right? I think we can all expect to take something like a 60% um, uh, cut, but when um, the good, the good part is you have to remember one, there are, there are going to be people with more money to have money saved up that are going to be willing to pay and they're going to pay that. Now they're going to understand the market. They're going to understand that prices have gone down. If they do go down, that's an assumption, but if they do go down, then yeah, then, then that will be um, available to them. But I think uh, what you were saying reminded me of too, pricing, right? So less, less theoretically, less money to go around, maybe not when hyperinflation eventually hits, but at some point, I think the prices, there'll be less money to go around, prices will take a dive. But just because they do, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to lower your prices. What you can do, and I think you were you were talking about this, is create different tiers to the pricing you already have. Yes, definitely. I'm I'm not a believer in bring your prices down. I'm 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 not. It needs to be worth it to you. It needs to be worth your time. Um, and I've started businesses in the past where my thought process was be the cheapest one in town. No questions about it. People are going to go to you. Now, did I get a lot of clients? I sure did. I had a lot of clients, but I wasn't making money. All day I was stressing out because the cheaper I charged, the more problematic clients I got. And after doing this for years, I said no more. I changed my um, my thought process. Now I started, you know, I charge more than everyone else, but I over deliver. Like I make sure I, I over deliver. Plus you cannot run a successful business if you don't charge what you're supposed to charge. If you're charging cheap, how are you going to hire the, the best employees to go above and beyond the service? You're not, you, you, you can't afford good employees. So, so definitely bringing down price to me is, is not the solution, especially when you have something to offer that's just going to take someone to another level. Well, what we, what you can do is, and I think you were talking about this is having different offerings. So let's, let's say I have one premium offering or, you know, uh, like a myriad of premium offerings, but then I, 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 I quickly see that the market is saying like, Hey, you know, less people are interested in this. I don't want to turn away a good client, a good customer, a good subscriber so what I could do is let, let's say you have unlimited classes and that's your, that's your normal offering. And it's $150 a month and you have people that are, they're saying, Hey, I can't afford this. Well, what you could do is you could go, Hey, no problem. We have a class that's just twice a week. That's $79 a month. You keep that same person, you give them a flexible option so they can cut their price in half you might be able to salvage that customer and then maybe make it up on the back end when they have more money. Well, I we do give options like that, but it's usually not a big difference. Unlimited 150 or two times a week, 79. Because if you do your job and you do it right, price is never the object. It, 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 tru it truly isn't. Um, and, but we do give, we do give options, right? But we need to make sure we over deliver on either option. Someone could go for one class a week because say that I have that option, right? And let's just say one class a week, it's $50 a month and unlimited 150. No one's gonna see results in a combat gym, whether it's learning self-defense or you wanna be a fighter, going once a week. So for me, the person, there are people that are gonna go for it, a, a lot of them. It's just going to make you look bad because at the end, they're going to tell them, oh, what did you learn? Nothing really. Well, of course not, right? Like, you took the cheaper option. But 
when they get a testimonial from them, it's going to be like, well, I'm not really learning much. It's very basic. Well, you're only going one, once a week. But there are scenarios where I do create a package. Let's just say the course I'm offering. I could have the full course and I'm just making up a, a I'm just going to make up some numbers. $10,000 for this course, we teach you everything. Then there's this one. It's just like for a fifth of the course. And this is $2,000. $2, um, yeah, to some people, oh, I could afford $2,000. Let, let me do that. But if you, if you promote your product right and it, everything comes down to sales, I really don't think that if someone's willing to spend two thousand, they're going to be willing to spend those those ten thousand. That that's my thought process, right? If I know there's other businesses that that have tiers, I just the most I'll have is like two different prices, and they're not that far off from each other. Because if I could agree them to bump up to to ah, oh, there's a class for one hundred, and there's one for one fifty. I like the one hundred. But once you explain it to them, then fifty dollars is not out of the question. Fifty more. You know what? I'll just do the one fifty. Yeah, it's totally worth it. So I think we have some divergence here because I think we are because I think we've lived so long in an environment where there's usually some means of getting credit or there is usually, you know, someone can work a little bit harder. Like if they want to, they can pick up that end job and and they can get that extra money or, you know, there's enough money to go around. Maybe they could borrow it from someone else. I think we are going to see such a harsh and extreme environment that those loose dollars, those those flex dollars that people could, if they just try a little harder, they can get. I think people will truly be at the end of their money. And at that point, price will become a consideration, even if people really want what you have and you can convince them like, hey, like this is worth it. Let me tell you why. And they believe you. They truly will be out of money and they won't have it to spend. No, I agree with that, right? So now we're talking about worst case scenario. If it gets really bad, which I believe me and you think it's going to get really bad, right? So yeah, of course, right? But but in that case, I think most things are going to be out of the window. Why? Because necessities are going to come for, first. I could barely afford clothing. I could barely afford food. So even if you're giving something really really cheap now you we might have to do this to get by right we might have to all right you know i'm cutting my prices by 50 percent. like there's no one coming in through the door and i need to see if it's worth it then and there but but yeah no you're you're, you're totally right uh, this recession hits as hard as we think it's gonna hit like a, a, a lot of things are gonna go out the window right no matter how good of a salesperson you are, this person's going to be, yeah, but I, I need my money to feed myself. But I think as a small business, there's a way to like maintain like the, the offering, but just like, like you change it so that you're not, it's not that it's not that you like you, Hey, like it's a recession, like wholesale, everything comes down 50%. It's like, well, you're going to pay less, but you'll get less, but you can still get this Let's say like some people just love their fitness, right? And they want to have something they love. Like, let's say in your case, they, they love their boxing class. They have fun. They enjoy the people. Um, they get a great workout. Everything, everything is great about it. They want to keep it in their life, but they can no longer afford the price point previously. And then you come up with a creative way to say, look, you know, we understand this set of your price range. We're not bringing it down all the way just because you have less money but we're still going to give you a semblance of what you had because right. We're, we're adjusting too, just like everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that could be a situation, but I'm picturing that going in, in my head, how much am I going to have to drop price and how many people are going to stay? Is it worth it to me at a certain point that might not be worth it to me. Right. Okay. I'm doing that. I'm charging less. I'm still paying the rent. I can still pay my employees. But now for this next year, I'm 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 working free, or is it coming out of my pocket? So it it, it all depends. There's sometimes you will will you will have to dr drop the price, not dramatically, but but to just to to keep people coming in coming in the door. But at that point, uh, how much do you really want to be in business? Are you 
we're all in business to make money. Well, right, right. I mean, I agree with you. I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and personally um, lose money that I was already have that I already had. And it's like, at some point, what, when is it worth it? But I'm thinking of small businesses that aren't in a position where it's like, they can opt out. I'm thinking of small businesses where it's like, I've got to make this work or else I don't work. Right. Like, unless, yeah. unless there's nothing for me. And I'm just trying to think of ways because I'm, I'm trying to put myself in these worst case scenarios where, where, where the business just isn't working. And it's like, how do I, you know, I hate the term pivot because it just means change. People are, they try to use it fancifully, but like, how do I adjust to where I'm at or how do I change or how do I, uh, flex into another option to where I can, uh, I can not, I don't think anybody's going to be excelling here. There'll be, there'll be some niches, but how do I uh, become robust and hopefully even profitable? I do think there will be ways to grow from this and not necessarily just on the other side, like when everything becomes better, but it's like, what can you do to get better? And I think improving what your offering is, is one option, right? Like, why stay stagnant yourself? Okay, people are buying less. So what? I'm going to go ahead and make my offering, my value proposition even better. Maybe I even raise my prices, but here's another way to flex. Here's what I was, here's, this is what I was getting at is too, is like, okay, now you keep the same price, but you can bring in someone else. Something like that. Something where the money doesn't go down, but the value increases. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, as entrepreneurs, one of our uh, main jobs is problem solving. Would you agree with that? You have to. We have to. That, that That's basically what an entrepreneur is. People have the definition of, um, well, I'm going on my own and doing my own thing to make money. But an entrepreneur is being able to problem solve and do it quick, right? I I, I believe I'm, I'm good at that. And I like this discussion we're having because I put myself in that situation. So I'll tell you what's coming what I'm thinking at the moment, what I'm thinking is, okay, let's just say I lose half my customers and the other half that's willing to stay, they need a discount. And let's just say this, this is not an excuse. Like they need a discount. They don't have money, right? They can only afford so, so much. And um, so what I would probably do in a scenario like this is how many employees do I have? How many employees do I need to keep the doors open? We already know you survived the recession. When things are going back to normal, you'll be strong. So at this point, I'll probably think to myself, okay, I lost half my customers. The other half, do I have to cut the price 50%? I probably do. How much money is going to come in at that 50%? Okay, I could pay the rent. I could pay the bills and my employee could make a, a decent check. Now, I'm not going to make nothing for myself, right? But if that employee or two could run the gym get paid, pay all the bills. Yeah, I'm not making money, but I'm making money in other ventures that I'm doing, right? And in other investments, other businesses. So I'll focus on that and come back to the business when I see things getting better. I would probably do something along those lines. Yeah, and, and it's, I think you said a good thing is that entrepreneur, we, we're just constantly like, it's, that's why I'm throwing out so much stuff at you is because it's like, okay, well, there's this, then there's the next action, right? And yeah. then when I'm thinking through that, I'm like, okay, less money, lower overhead. What have I been spending on that I don't need, right? We, I'm sure there's, everything's on subscription now. So it's like, well, what, what software am I using? What services do I have? What do I not need to uh, run the essentials of my business that people derive the most value from. And I think you even said stepping in yourself, which is a great idea. Like, Hey, look, what's to stop you from going in there and taking the place of one of your employees. If you've got to make it work, then you'll make it work. Exactly. And that's the, see, that's another scenario, right? Okay. I don't got nothing else going on as most business owners, small businesses, you depend on that one business. So, Hey, if I got to get in there and and do what my employees do and just run the day-to-day -day operations myself, then I got to do that, right? Um, I know in this case, I wouldn't because I know what I'm capable of doing outside, but, but you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to step in, get your hands dirty for, for a while. 
And I like that you're throwing all this because they're all different scenarios. So in my head, I start thinking I would do this. I would do that. One thing I know for sure, I'm going to come out ahead. I'm going to come out on, on top. Why? I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And, and I always do. I honestly always do. And I think that's what, that's what everyone listening to this podcast as a small business owner, like, you know, right now, the good thing is we're already, we, we, none of us are delusional. The people that are listening to this podcast, they're not delusional. They know that we are entering into extreme negative economic conditions. Okay, fine. Now what? And so it's, it's, it's this mindset of yes, things will be difficult. Yes, there will be losses, but let's hold this over as best we can and then come out on the other side because I can't foresee, like given the, the wealth that has been created that we exist in, right? Like, like in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, in the United States, we live in opulence through just how much, how, how much, how many different things we have and, and what we have access to. And so I think if we, if we can prepare for two to three years and then just get by in that time and not shut down, or at least be able to flow into another business and have that be successfully, there will be really, really good times ahead. Um, and, and it's just, it's just about getting through this and um, figuring out the whole while, what do we need to do? What is our next step? And so I like what you said there because that's what's going to happen. You know, it's, you're going to figure it out one way or another. Yeah. And I like what you said. Um, I believe the same thing. The future looks bright, right? Not the near future. Two or three years from now, um, I, I expect to make big things happen. But you got to do what you got to do. I've even been looking at other countries in case, you know, <laughs> got to go somewhere. I've been looking at other countries and I've never thought in my life I, 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 I would do something like that. Another thing you mentioned is, you said something along, along the lines of most entrepreneurs, business owners know, know what's coming. With that, I'll dis disagree a little bit. There's so many people that just don't want to accept reality. I've talked to other business owners. I tell them I'm preparing because if you thought that was bad in 2020, a lot worse is coming. They don't want to have that conversation. They just they just want to dream about unicorn and rainbows and <laughs> just picture that everything's just getting a, a lot better. And it's it surprises me because to be a successful business owner, entrepreneur, you got to face it head on like these big problems. To be successful entrepreneur, you gotta be uncomfortable. I mean, you gotta be comfortable with being uncomfortable, if that makes sense at all times. Once you accept that, the future will be easier. Once you know it's always gonna be hard. You're 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 always gonna you're always gonna have to fight for things to come out ahead. Once you accept that mentality, uh, you you'll have a great future. But most people start getting depressed, start getting sad. Um, they're looking for someone to help them. No one's going to help you. No. Has anyone ever came in your lifetime to just come and help you and make sure you were okay? It never happens. And it's not going to happen. And you should, that's, that's yeah. it's just, you never, never think of it that way, but we are, we are in the last seven plus minutes of this episode. So when, as we're nearing, I want to ask, I'm going to ask you a few questions and, and just putting you on the spot and, we don't, we, he doesn't, David does not know what I'm about to ask him. Should I, I, I don't, I'm not an entrepreneur. I've never owned a small business. Should I start a business right now? Yes. Why? Yes. Because right. I, I'm in the, um, I'm thinking the same about myself. Should I expand to new businesses? And at first I was thinking, just wait to see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen. So are you going to wait five years, 10 years? What if nothing happens? in five or 10 years. So I would say start, start now. And you'll find a way. You'll always find a way to come out on top. But if you wait, you're never going to find that way. So, so yeah, I would say start it, start it now, because 
the economy could be perfect and there's no guarantee that your business is going to thrive, right? So uh, I would say ju ju just go for it. I, I would. One thing that's certainly true that you said is we don't know when this is come going to come about. Like, right, the, I, the, the idea of the 2023 recession is, is um, interesting to me. And I mean that in the truest sense of the word, because what does that mean? Like, is there a kickoff event? Is it, is it, are they talking about a crash like in 2008 where one fine day, the stock market just fell down? Like, what is it exactly? Because technically we're already in a recession. And I think when people say 2023 recession, what they really mean is they think that, you know, we will actually, there will actually be a, some kind of marker because we've already been in this economic malaise and it's like, we're in a zombie economic situation. Um, it's a bad one, but I don't know what it is that people are waiting for. Because like you said, what if this just goes on for another three years? Are, are you going to sit on the sidelines and just do nothing? No, heck no. I'll give you an example. We all hear about a real estate crash coming and it's coming. Do we know when? No. So I'm giving it towards the end of this year to see what happens. A price, they're already coming down prices. How much? Are they going to come down? I don't know. But if they don't come down, I'm going to go ahead and move forward with just investing in different properties because I could be waiting five or 10 years and I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put my, my life on hold. Are you listening to the experts on YouTube that are telling you X, Y, Z, right? Like, are you, or how much are you taking from them? And how do you look at the the YouTube experts and um and their advice? Like how do you how do you um how do you put it in context for yourself? You know what? I used to listen to them more. They're all wrong. They most of those those YouTube people, they've been wrong on their predictions, right? And just like just like anything, they'll throw a hundred things out, get 99% of them wrong. They get the one thing right. See, remember I did a video on this day and I said this, that. Anyone could do it, right? Tomorrow I could tell you, Chris, I could tell the future. Tomorrow's going to be between 10 degrees and 100, right? Oh, see, I told you. But they they, they just throw stuff like that out there. But um, I, 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 do, I do look at YouTube videos. I do look at the, the, the professionals for for insight and once you have experience you could put these things together and that'll help but if you just look at videos and someone says literally do this and that and you go do it without putting it together yourself um i just think you're you're in for disappointment well I th there's so much and the reason i ask that is because there's rampant alarmism on youtube and one person that really comes to mind for me is robert kiyosaki and I know he's he's amongst others. I know there's been Harvey Dent, or not Harvey Dent, Harry Dent too. And and um, it's like Robert Kiyosaki just wants to be that guy that's going to proclaim that the, you know everything is going bad. Um, but here's the thing: is like it's just at this point, it's just piling on. Like everybody who's watched it has watched it, and there's no more to be had. And he's been saying it. He's been saying that for over a year now. So. You know, time is material in this too. You can only predict and forecast for so long before it's just like you've been wrong, right? Because time has passed us by. A year is a long time. That's over one percent of our lives. And if you just sit there waiting because I'm on hold because Robert Kiyosaki or Harry Dent or um, who is this? What's his name? The guy uh, Peter Schiff or whoever keeps predicting things will melt down. Okay, well, waiting, waiting, waiting. Maybe, yeah, one day it will happen. We do know the fundamentals are poor, but at in the meantime, this thing can take years to unravel. Yeah. You know, that's a perfect example, Robert Kiyosaki, right? He's been predicting the next crash since 2016. What are we at now? 2023? Yes. 2023. Nothing has happened. Now, I have so much respect for Robert Kiyosaki. He his book changed my life, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But that's the perfect example of what I told you. Stuff that he says, I'll put it together, not just because he said it and because his book was just changed my life. If I would have followed his instructions, right? Like 
about it crashing in 2016. Look, we're still here seven years later, right? He's been talking about gold silver. We haven't really seen any moves with um with gold silver. In fact, we haven't even hit silver all time highs. But but I'm able to put that together, right? But I look into things, I, I figure it out for myself. But yeah, a lot of these gurus, like I haven't really seen anyone spot on. Like th th this is going to be a different crash. I remember in the 08 crash, Robert Kiyosaki, um, it was Magic Johnson. I believe Donald Trump spoke that day. Um, Tony Robbins or Anthony Robbins, whatever his name is. He all spoke at the Real Estate and Wealth Expo. This was a year before the crash. And they all kept saying within the next year, we're going to see the biggest crash. And the way they said it, that's what became true a year later. Now, all these guys have said the same thing, but they've been saying this since 2016, we're in 2023. So something big's going to happen, but we don't know when. So you can't put your life on hold. You, you just can't. Time's precious. Your life's precious. Live your life. Live your dreams. Try, try to make it happen. I think, and this will will end it here, but I think the way to contextualize the the warnings, right, is that you don't want to get over leveraged in your business. So don't, this is not that I would do it anyway, but especially as a small business owner, this is not the time to go buy into a thousand dollars worth of inventory. This is the time to start light and maintain a light framework going forward. And so that way you're not um, you're not over leveraged when the economy does does take a strong dip, and um, that is all the time we have. David, thanks for joining. I'm going to add knockout business. Uh, I'm going to add that to the description so you can visit uh, David's channel. Um, and that's it for this episode. All right, see you.